Hey everyone, it's your captain speaking here and welcome back to Strike Fighters Modern Combat. So today we are taking out the FCK. Oh nice if they actually add the f one to the game. It's such a mean plane. When my friend told me about it for the first time I laughed so hard. <laughs> We have a WhatsApp group with him, which is literally named after that plane. For explanation, the f*** is a Taiwanese 4th gen light twin engine jet fighter. Basically, the Taiwanese Air Force wanted the F-16, but the US were like, Nein! So the Taiwanese thought, fuck you guys, we'll build our own jet. And they literally called it the fuck one <laughs> I wish they would've named it the fuck you though, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Which was added to Reinforcement Pack 9 recently. There are two variants in the game, the FCK-1A and the FCK-1C Xiongying, which means Brave Hawk in the traditional Chinese language. The, the price of the FCK-1A is 38,000 credits, while the FCK-1C costs 79,000 credits. Um, the difference in weapon capability is that the FCK-1A's air-to-ground munitions are limited to unguided bombs and rockets, while the FCK-1C improves on that by adding precision-guided anti-ground and anti-ship munitions, including the Xiong Feng-2 anti-ship missile and the Wan Chiang air-to-ground missile. Also, the FCK-1C increased the capacity of Skysword 2 missiles, which are air-to-air -air or anti-radiation TC-2 and TC-2A respectively from 2 to 4, so the BVR capability is definitely improved, although it may still not be good as the most advanced uh, PRC fighters. So, and the cockpits of these aircraft is very similar to the F-16 originally, but since the MLU upgrade starting in 2014 and ending in 2017 to 2018, the cockpit has changed the three displays, but some parts are still relatively similar to the F-16, and visually speaking, to towards the front, the aircraft seems visually similar to the F-16, except for having the two smaller air intakes, and towards the rear, it looks like the F-20 Tiger Shark, except for the tail and engine. I'll be putting links down in the description if you want to learn more. I'll be revving up the engines, and I'll see you in the very first mission. Hey guys and welcome back to the first mission. This is going to be an anti-ship mission against enemy surface ships which include destroyers and frigates. Uh, so this is the best kind of anti-ship mission for the FCK-1 because it can't um, destroy all the transport ships because it lacks the payload to do so. It's got only 5,000 pounds according to the in-game specifications description in the menu. So we can only really do anti-surface missions because the ships here have the least hit points and with our 500 pound bombs we should be able to take out one of the less advanced Chinese frigates with our um, payload of 500 pounds if we hit it in the middle so we are um, we got no targeting pod on the FCK-1 Jing Kyo either because uh, I'm not sure why but it is what it is so it will be harder to do to destroy enemy forces in anti-ship and anti-ground missions because uh, I think this aircraft is the most useful. Honestly, there are far more useful options like the F4EJ Kai Phantom 2, the Super Hornet, uh, the SU-34, and the Rafale. They are all more useful. So we finally got to our ideal launch range, which is uh, less than 10 miles. Uh, you can verify this in the cockpit view. And we are able to launch our our Xiong Feng 2 anti-ship missiles at the enemy ships and kill them instantly, even the more advanced Chinese frigates. Yeah, so if you know how to launch an AGM-34 Harpoon, and we're gonna do a climbing maneuver there, because we're too low and the enemy ships can now see us even when we're sea skimming. So we're climbing to confuse our radar so they cannot get the firing solution on us. And we're gonna use our bombs now on this aircraft are only two bombs to, to find one of the less advanced Chinese frigates. Watch out for the CIWS mount, the 30mm cannons on Chinese destroyer or frigate. We got hit, uh, I only have 28% health left. Gotta be careful, very careful because you can't fly straight. You gotta keep even the sight to maneuver, you gotta try to stay fast, stay as fast as possible. And I'm trying to find a Chinese ship right now so that I can get the points. And it looks like I was able to find one of them. And I instantly destroy that ship with my two bombs very, very close. It's kind of like skip bombing that the B-25s use in World War II, but 
a very different approach. Um, look out for the missile again. I've deployed some flares. Uh, they're sorry for the stutters there. This is on the night at Air 2, by the way. Uh, we are um, now we got three enemy fighters. They're going to be J 11 B flankers. And the good thing is that the FCK one can turn tighter because of the lighter weight it has, which is going to, which I'm going to show you here. I'm going to try to use my M61s, but looks like I didn't aim well enough. But I took out uh, one of them, and I half damaged both the other J11s that survived. I'm going to pull my aircraft into the vertical so that I can uh, get into the better position for the head-on and take them out in the next head-on attack. All right. So I'm going to fire a Fox 2 on that farther J11 and I shoot the, the newer one, he's trying to turn away, he deployed flares, and I'm slowing down so I can still do a snapshot on him, and I do it in time, and he's dead. So now the timer's 10 seconds left, and I think I'm pretty satisfied by how I've been able to survive. That was a really close call. So that's it for this mission. Mission accomplished. So here are the results for the mission. I got 900 points. It isn't bad, but isn't good either. Welcome to our air to ground review of this aircraft, which involves an air interdiction mission. We're also showcasing the new Taiwan maps so as you see the scenery off the island. Buckle up your seat belts because we're going to be flying low, down, and evading the terrain and pulling high G's in this mission. So we're going to see the weakness of the FCK-1 Jinkuo and the FCK-1C Xiongying in this mission because they don't have a targeting pod as I've said before and that gets really really serious when there's a lot of ground targets going around in this mission especially in air interdiction where there is a lot of uh, SAM sites, a lot of uh, trucks and enemy armored vehicles that shoot back at you and those SAMs as well like it's not you're not gonna be able to choose the who you're gonna be able to shoot for example with the TC2 Sky Sword 2 way and you're gonna see that later on so so it's three enemy fighters just uh, locked on to me. My allies are trying to, to hit them with their Fox 3s, with their active radar missiles. So they're able to distract those uh, planes, which I believe were either J-10s or J-11s. And we're closing in on the enemy, uh, the enemy convoy. So we're going to start deploying our TC-2A, Skysword 2A anti-radiation missiles in order to be able to take out the combined AA or SAM defense which include the Chinese PCG-09 with a 30mm cannon and the PCG-04A anti-aircraft defense system which includes an AA gun and a SAM. So that PCG-04 just launched a missile at me. I'm gonna evade it. I will deploy flares just to make sure. Um, yeah, my, my anti-radiation missile didn't hit probably, probably because it hit the terrain. I look at that one. I am starting to use, gonna start using my rocket pods. Try to eliminate those ones before I get too close. I'm gonna pull out. I'm gonna roll side to side so that it will be harder for them to hit me. And I'm gonna be doing multiple passes against those uh, missiles. I mean, against those AA defenses before they, all right, so that they can't get the firing solution on me. Now look again, I'm coming back around because I still have some speed and because I'm above 400 knots, 500 high subsonic speeds, it's going to be hard for them to hit me, so I'm going to hit these remaining anti-area that I did get in the first pass, and I managed to destroy all of them, and, and oh, look, that anti-aircraft gun I missed with my anti-radiation missile is right in front of me, so that's a win for me. They lost, they underestimated this plane. Yeah, it, it's a plane. So, Chain Kuo is a plane for experts, definitely. If you're really, really good at trying to evade anti aircraft and you're really, really good at getting lots of points in, in air interdiction. So, I take out some of the convoy there. They're firing back at me, so I'm trying to roll away and climb back for another pass. And hopefully, I'll be able to destroy most of the convoys so I can focus on some anti aircraft. I can't verify the identity. Because I was thinking at first these were weak SA-2 SAM sites. Uh, I wasn't really familiar with the air defense. But I realized later on that this is kind of a hypothetical scenario where China is invading Taiwan. And I definitely see uh, two more anti-aircraft defenses. That's a pretty weak AA gun that I can't identify, but it's not very good. I shoot that one. It might be the S-68, but I'm not sure. And a PCG-04A. A or Sam fires at me, I deploy my flares just to be sure. 
Um, flare usage is very important in this aircraft. You want to be able to take on tough air interdiction missions and survive, get massive points. You gotta know when to deploy your flares in the best moments. Alright, and I fire my last rocket here. And I destroyed most of the convoy. I was able to confirm that only one vehicle survived and I was able to get more points. Right, the mission is being accomplished and here are the results for this mission. Welcome to the final part of this review, which is a fighter sweep mission, an air-to-air -air review. So we have some fighters spotted at 2 o'clock. We're loaded with two TC-1 and TC-2 Skysword 1 and 2 missiles, heat seeking and active radar guided respectively. We're just uh, returning towards those fighters and we're going to launch supersonic speed to get as much energy on this missile as possible. Not that it may matter in this game. He launches a missile. This is the ESR Chinese J-11D flankers. I'm going to to swipe uh, diagonally right so I can use this barrel roll maneuver to evade the missile and that missile got defeated so I have uh, launched my missile and he's dead so that's kill number one um, I have to ch I'm gonna chase the other fighter formation which hasn't engaged yet as they used to not engage even if you were behind them but in the more recent updates they now engage you so I'm closing into gun range in case any of them deploy players uh, and one of the J-11s is breaking off. I got a snapshot on that one. Um, pull up simply because I don't want to get engaged in a turn fight with them. They got higher turn rate right now. So I pulled the high yo-yo right there. And I was able to get a, a shot on one of the j uh, I missed that shot, unfortunately. But, oh, he and I killed him. We almost killed him. Reduced 1% health. I'm not sure how he survived that. But did this other snapshot and he's dead. And you're going to see how the Ching Kubo is very agile in terms of turn radius. See when I'm doing the semi split S, I'm able to turn back on this other on this other Chinese Sukhoi, which is trying to get ahead on with me, and he's dead. So kill number two and kill number three. Uh, I left one of them alive because I missed him. So I'm going to turn back towards him, uh, and I'm gonna try to get a deflection shot on him with my M61 Vulcan. He's trying to avenge all of his. Uh, teammate uh, office wingman right now no oh, I get him I only get him down to 50% health and I know there are other aircraft incoming I'm gonna try to help my allies here um, and look at, look at what happens there time to launch a missile and it, it seems like these fighters I learned from the mission box that these were J11D flankers with a ESA radar so I can't really see the the line, the RWR warning as well because their AEs, the radar, is basically has low probability of intercept and features on them. So I get this J11B in the head on, uh, he's dead. So goodbye to him, kill number four. There's gonna be a J11 I tried to, um, which is a J11B. I haven't been able to kill him because I only reduced him down. Okay, now I'm gonna shoot. I'm not gonna shoot this one yet. I'm gonna try to go to a head on so I can save my missiles for the toughest situations. Those uh, J 11 Ds are firing back at me with the BL 10 heat seeking missiles. Because of that, I could then uh, concentrate on that plane. Now those J uh, 11 Ds are on me, so I'm gonna do uh, get this one to kill number five. And now I see the J 11 B again that I damaged. Unfortunately, I'm out. I'm gonna I'm gonna push uh, the missile button because I ran out of M61 Vulcans. I can snipe them from afar. All right, kill number six, I believe. And look at those those other aircraft. There are more J11Ds coming, but unfortunately, I ran out of ammunition. You need quite a bit of trigger discipline because there's only approximately 500 rounds in this aircraft. Another aircraft's launching a missile on me. It's a good thing it's one of the older. J11, so it's not too threatening, and the missile couldn't even get that close to me. I'm trying to use my small turn radius to the best advantage possible, but the J11s just fired again, the non AE subversion. And I do this barrel low again, like I did before, and I threw off that missile. So, we only have 20, like 20, 20 seconds left. I'm trying to get the remaining aircraft. This was kill number seven over there. See the small turn radius coming to action. And I get another head on here. This is my favorite way to kill them. And kill number eight there. I'm just gonna turn towards those J11s, the J11B, so I can get. But 
I failed to deploy the button and unfortunately we won't have to have a safe trip home. So here's my final thoughts on the Ching Kuo. It's not the best aircraft, but it can work around every random mission it encounters as long as you have the right loadouts and the right tactics and the right skills. So um, in the air to ground and anti-ship, it's not the best, but at least it is capable of defending the, the nation it's designed for. And also in the air to air mission, it is um, pretty pretty good in the air to air arena because if you fly the F-16 Fighting Falcon, this aircraft is a very good aircraft and it's not even that expensive either uh, the maneuverability and the speed are all similar to the F-16 so I hope to be able to review the other parts like sinking the Taiwanese Navy in this game that said see you guys next time